Hello everyone and welcome to the Zero K Anniversary 2v2 Tournament. It's been one year since the Steam release and we are doing a tournament. I mean, other than the fact that we do a tournament every month, but, you know, independent of that, we have a tournament for the Zero K Steam Release Anniversary and it is a 2v2 tournament. We're going to be starting out with a few matches just to sort out the top eight. And the very first match is going to be between Moon, Man, Moon Merc versus Sparkles and Manu 12, or Endgame Boss. So that is going to be the first match as we get into that. It's kind of it's going to be interesting. Is this tournament, I'm a little worried about it because like it feels like, I'm curious, is it going to be, how's this going to go? I haven't seen these teams play very much. It's, ah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. But it's going to be kind of scary, but I think, I think it'll work out. I think it'll be good overall so teams just getting all set up and ready once we have that done then should be able to get going once everyone's picked where they are so yeah moo i haven't really seen much of merc i've seen a little bit of of course man 12 and sparkles we know quite well so this it's going to be a bit of a challenge for moo and merc for certain I'm actually kind of curious what they're going to do overall to try to deal with the fact that they are dealing with a rather difficult team. I mean, this is... It's definitely a team that is going to be a challenge to deal with. I mean, Moo and Merc, they are up against what are effectively two of the best players in the game. And we can begin as... We have Moo going for the Jumbot Factory, Merc going for the... Or, sorry, Merc going for the Jumbot Factory, Moo going for the Spiderbot Factory. All at the same time, we have Mana 12 going for the Gunships, and Sparkles is going for Cloakies. So I say right now, overall, that I kind of have a bit more faith in South Theme in Endgame Boss than I do in Moo and Merc, just because... Endgame boss, they have the gunships. They have the way of getting in. They can rush in. They can do a lot of damage. I don't disagree with the use of spiders, though. I mean, the fleas will be able to at least scout out where the blast wings are going and have some idea what's happening. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot here to defend it. So Moon and Merc are going to have to rebuild fairly quickly as they've lost quite a bit already when it comes to their economy. At the same time, hardly any damage has been dealt back. Some will be. It's definitely being prepared for. But it is proven to be very difficult for Moon Merc to actually maintain any footing economically, while at the same time, it's going to be a majorly easy way for Mana 12 and Sparkles, for Endgame Boss that is, to actually get in and do the damage they need to do. So, with that, it looks like Moon Merc at least able to get a bit of scouting going. They have some fleas around, they kind of know where and when there's going to be stuff coming out from Endgame Boss. I just am not sure how this is actually going to work out ultimately. I feel like Endgame Boss is going to be still just winning based on the fact that their economy has become very strong. Like, relatively speaking, Endgame Boss has expanded rapidly in the time it's taken for the game to get, or for Moon and Merc to even just get on their feet. To get back on their feet as they keep losing to these Blast Wings. Finally, we're getting a pick it up to at least try to slow this down. But at this point, Moon and Merc have had to build their metal extractors twice over and haven't really been able to do any real damage. And we do see that Merc is coming in here with a Pyro just to try to find some way of defending, which isn't working out too poorly. In fact, this one Glaive not able to do much harassment, but again, that Glaive is at least able to stop the production from happening. That's the important thing here. This this Constable cannot actually build any work, any metal extractors right now. It can't do anything. So I don't expect there to be a whole lot of real developments there. It's going to kind of be a silly situation. But more so, it's going to be a very difficult situation for Moon Merc to actually get out of this. Like I said, it's awkward. It's bad. It's not It's not really doing them any favors. The fact that they're trying to do what they can in a situation where they haven't been able to expand. And I think the biggest problem right now is that while the Blast Wing has been a problem... Not a whole lot has been done to expand despite that. I mean, we do have this constable trying from Merc, but Mu hasn't expanded over to the east at all. And I will grant there is this Banshee, or Banshee, this Locust right here, which is causing problems. But, you know, it's 
one unit isn't going to be doing that much. Like, it, it doesn't help, but it's still just one unit. So I think, I think you gotta send in a couple, you know, send in a red back or something, get some workers going. The point is, there's a lot more money on the south side, a lot more metal on the south side. Endgame boss really has themselves set up. So at this point, just push forward, get those glaives in there, get rid of the lotus, just destroy everything. That's, that is endgame boss's strategy. They are able to get rid of one of these constables, and finally the constable does go down. Pyro trying to help out afterwards, and it should be able to at least dissuade these glaives from approaching, and indeed it does, but it may not even matter. The glaives going for the moderator instead want to get rid of this before any real problems come in, and I think that's going to happen. These glaives really haven't got any resistance. The pyro is trying to deal with them, but it's not going to be fast enough. Moderator only gets a couple kills, but that's really not the point. Now the pyro actually also running into a bit of a tough spot as the glaives are coming in. Do manage to get some damage on it, but it's not going to be... It's not going to be a happy ending for the Pyro, as the Pyro is destroyed, and that destroys pretty much all of Merc's defenses. The last Constable coming in here trying his best to deal with what's happening, and it's having a rough time. At the same time, a lot of damage being dealt over to Moose Commander, or sorry, Merc's Commander. Nat Locust coming in here, ripping everything apart, and that is going to be Merc's Commander down. At the same time, that's pretty much Merc's entire front base, so... Merc really being the only one doing much daring, at this point, that's not helpful. Moose trying to build up over the eastern side of the map, but, I mean, look at the map right now. It's entirely in control of Endgame Boss. There's not much that can be done to help deal with that. The only saving grace at this, like, the only saving grace right now is there's at least some metal for Moon Merc, and there aren't enough caretakers. Actually, they could put more production value in, so, I mean, they're... Oh no, there is one. Never mind. There is no saving grace. Moon Merc, I don't see how they can actually get out of this. Maybe they have something clever up in mind, but I just don't even see it. Even with the worker they have here, 340 metal reclaim is not going to be enough to help deal with this. That is not a good position to be in. Very strong contain coming in here. As the sides trying to just finish the job, should be able to get rid of the caretaker, possibly get rid of the constable. Actually, yes, get rid of the constable for sure. Possibly get rid of the factory, actually. The caretaker goes down no problem. The constable shouldn't take too much longer to go down, and it is at least helping a little bit. It does have that slow beam, but it's not enough. Another scythe comes in here, finishes the job. The factory should be going down any second now as the scythe's doing everything they can to tear it apart, and I'd say, yeah, they're doing a pretty darn good job. Once that, now that pick is gone, factory's gone, Merc throws in the towel, Moo, it's up to them, and I don't know what they're going to be planning on doing. They have one caretaker up, they have enough to use all their metal, but I don't expect Mu is going to be just going all alone on this. I think they are going to be done. They do have, have a tarantula, just in case. Try to help out with the locusts. I can't say I have the biggest faith in this. Like, not to downplay them. I just don't expect that one tarantula is going to be able to deal with half a dozen locusts. And gnats. It just seems a little bit unlikely to me. Maybe just me. Maybe just me. Maybe I just, you know, didn't deal with that, but yeah, I think it's probably going to be a problem. So, we have the tarantula here trying. Actually, not doing a bad job, come to think of it. On top of the Stardust, this actually is not a bad defensive position. I mean, I don't see any way that Moo can actually deal with this, but now at least they've got something, but the commander, of course, does go down. That is going to put Moo in an extremely awkward position. They have a great amount of anti-air, but even... Even then, the Scythes will be able to come in here. They can just go past that Stardust while that Stardust is causing problems. As long as that Stardust can be avoided and or just bypass completely, Thresher trying to do what it can. Doing a decent amount, but it's not nearly enough. Does get rid of one last Raven before going down itself. But the remaining Scythes can still come in here. It can still rip apart the rest of the base. Just getting in, getting out, recloaking. That is really clever, though. Like, get in, do some damage, get out, recloak. But even with that, there's not a whole lot they can do. And that is it. Moo throws in the towel. And that is game one going to Moo and Merc. So game one. Bit of a blow there, honestly, for Moo and Merc. I mean, they certainly tried. But it was just, as you can see, clearly the metal use was way too high. The metal income was way too high. South just expanded a bunch. And they harassed far too well for Moo and Merc to effectively deal with. So, with that, we're going to be moving on to Game 2 once that gets sorted out. 
I mean, game two, that's... That is up to Moon Merc what map they want to pick. I would expect they'd want to pick something... Probably a bit smaller. Just not have to worry about being out macroed as much. Although, I don't know, maybe they want something bigger. Maybe they want to actually do the out macroing themselves. Who am I to judge? I mean, there's pretty good reason to go for either. But whatever they go for, we'll have to find out once they get to it, because it's, you know, their pick, but it could take a little while, you know how it is. So, I don't know. I'm thinking of the maps available, if we see what they have as options, they are... Okay, so Winner's Bracket, they may have HQ Channel, Badlands, Frozen Planet. Oh, I think Frozen Planet would be really good for anything coming at them like it just did. Although I'm not entirely sure what the limitation is. Because there's a map list for the tournament, but Bandit Plains wasn't on it. So I'm not quite sure what the limitations are. It's like every featured map or just a random map. I guess if it's random, it must be random featured. And... Yeah, it looks like it's going to be up to Merc to figure out what the heck to do with this. So, kind of curious how this is actually going to work out ultimately. But I think what will likely happen is that Moon Merc will pick something a little bit on the smaller side. I mean, it could be wrong. It just seems like that's a likely possibility considering... So yeah, I don't know. This is a bit of an awkward situation. Like I said, I think Moon Merc are going to be finding... I think they'll be finding some success with the... I think we find some success with a small enough that they want to go for it. And it looks like at this point they are going to be going for Baron. So they are going for not such a smaller map, but definitely a map that has less in the way of, well, less in the way, less things that they actually deal with as they go through. So that could be a viable option. So yeah, we'll be getting to that once they start it up. I'm not sure when that's going to be gone to, though. Ah, there we go. Alright, we will be getting going right away. So yeah, Baron, not a map I've seen a whole lot recently. It's it's one of those maps that tends to take a while. Like, it's not a particularly high resource map, which is why I think we're seeing that be the counter pick. I just... I'm not entirely sure how well that's going to work out. I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense. It's just... Well, they got cheesed early on. Like, Moon Merc. Like, endgame boss... weren't running the same way. So I think it will still be a bit of an issue. Going forward. Of course, that being said, it's still quite possible that we'll have... No, it's probably not going to be an upset. I, I feel like it's... Like, endgame boss... They don't really have a huge amount to worry about here, all things considered. Not not to be too... Too pessimistic on this. It just doesn't feel like there's a huge amount threatening them. As much as it might sometimes feel, as much as it might feel like I want to have, want to say Moon Merc, you know, I got, go for it, you got something to go in there. It's like, man, you got an uphill battle. <laughs> this is not an easy situation to be in. Just not gonna lie, this is not something, not a situation I envy. Going for Moon Merc, they've got to try to find some way of getting in early and quickly if they want to get anywhere. But now we are 
good to go. So let's get started with the second game, game two between Endgame Boss and Moon Mark. And this time we have Endgame Boss going for Shield Bots and Shield Bots, while Moon Mark go for Cloakies and Spider Bots. Again, Mark with the Spider Bots, clearly a major fan of them. Or wait, no, last time Mark was with the Jump Bots, but either way. Clearly, Moonmark as a team are a major fan of Spider Bots, so I'm not surprised in the slightest that we're seeing that. But at the same time, it is still a little bit of an interesting choice. At the same time, that we are getting very, very early felon coming out from from the Endgame boss team. This actually is very surprising. Why would seriously this this early? Okay, daring, but sure, why not? Give it a shot. See what happens. I think. I think it might be a little bit too daring, to be honest. But I'm actually quite curious to see how this is going to pan out. I mean, maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll make sense. I kind of doubt it. But then again, this is also the stronger team. So it's worth a shot. But the question, of course, is are we going to see Ronan come in? And indeed we are. Actually, I really like this counter coming in from Moo. They've got the right idea. Going for the longer range units. Try to avoid directly engaging with the felon because felons do have a fairly large range but there's when you actually look at it compared to a ronin it's not especially large like ronin ronin range is 455 rogue range is 435 so with good kiting ronin can kind of get away it's not going to be quite enough the felon should be able to walk in as the ronin are backing up but it won't be the worst thing in the world the ronin are not going to be completely destroyed like, it'll be tough, but it won't be impossible. And, of course, you have the spiders as well. So, you actually have the venoms coming in with that per with the lightning. One shot of that is still going to be a fair amount of shield damage. Because, bear in mind, lightning, as its like, status damage in general, deals... I think it's triple damage to shields. So, if that, if that venom can get a single shot off, the shields are down for the felon. Of course, the question is whether or not Venom can actually get in there without dying. And that is a very unlikely thing to happen. I mean, the rogues have to kite and have to kite hard in order to have any shot at getting in here. I mean, with enough units trying, maybe. But the main option here is the Widow. I like that. Good early Widow coming in here from Merc. Try to get rid of the Felon. It's going to be tricky just to actually position that properly. But if it works, that Felon is going to be dead. And that's, what, 400 metal? 600 metal. 600 metal early on. Same time we have a bunch of thugs coming in and outlaws being built up by Sparkles on top of that. So, Mano and Sparkles really doing everything they can to try to just get rid of this. Oof. But at the same time, there's not a whole lot actually threatening the Felon. I mean, there's the Felon's out of shields, but the bandits are in here just to get rid of the Ronin. And there's not a whole lot that the Redback can do to stop that. Because, again, the Felon is going to be getting shields back gradually. The Venom... Ha the Widow, rather. Not Venom. The Widow hasn't quite come in to actually finish the job, and I don't expect it's going to happen. But it might. There's an outside possibility it might happen. The Pandas trying to get rid of the Commander are not going to have as much success either. But there's the Widow coming in here, and there it goes. Gets the Felon down. That's the Redback can come in and do some damage, but unfortunately there's already a bunch of defenses, as is not a lot that the Redback can really do. Commander trying to come in as well, and there's, only, there's still... 19 seconds left before the Felon's actually useful. But the Thug Law Ball here providing too much resistance. That Felon, another 10 seconds left, but it's not really threatened. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of damage being dealt. But the Outlaw is going to go down with that down. Not a whole lot can really get in the way anymore. Again, Venoms can stop it, but it's not going to matter. That is Merc's commander down. Moose commander is still standing, but this should be enough. The Felon has come back online, and with that, Endgame Boss has destroyed both of the commanders coming out from Moo and Merc, and already tripled their economy. Merc throwing in the towel. Moo, I don't expect to last much longer than this. And altogether, that is going to be very likely a 2-0 victory for Endgame Boss off of basically two early game, well, early-ish game, cheese-ish strategies. I mean, the Felon, definitely. That was, that was a real push. The Blast Wings before, that wasn't entirely atypical, especially for 2v2. So, not a bad thing to have done. I mean, it wasn't, I wouldn't call it cheese, especially on a map as big as Bandit Plains. But it was really effective harassment. And this, however, this is just, like, felon rush. If that felon got destroyed, if there was enough to actually just stop this entire shield ball, which 
I think theoretically there could have been, then yeah, it would have been different. But I mean, this entire time too, there's been expansion after expansion after expansion. Man of 12 and Sparkles have been doing everything they can to just take the entire map. So yeah, end game boss, they played this safe. They knew that even if they lost the felon, they at least had something to rebuild off of. So yeah, that is going to be the first round 2-0 in favor of Endgame Boss. Very quick 2-0 too, for that matter. So I'm just going to see. Are there, are there any other matches that have been? I feel like the other matches are probably not done yet. Okay, well, looks like we... Okay, I've got to double-check, so I'm just going to... Hmm. Not... Unfortunately, it's hard to tell what's going on in terms of the actual stats for any other match, so I can't really easily jump in. I'm... I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on. I want I kinda wanna jump into another match because I usually do that, but I don't know. Oh no, I usually do that with Swiss. I don't usually do that with with these tournaments. These tournaments I usually jump into afterwards. So I'm just gonna I'm just going to go to a quick break while I find the next game. And then we'll be moving on. So stay tuned, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Actually, do stay tuned. I just realized I didn't put it on the right profile setting, so I'm going to have to switch up some stuff, too. So we'll take a couple minutes. We'll be actually down for a couple minutes. So stay tuned. I'll be... I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> 